zero today. Good. Yes, that's good. <laughs> Today's going to be quiet. Uh, upper 80s, close to 90 still, and the humidity is actually a little bit less, but we're going to take a look back at those storms. Here's a 12 hour radar loop. You can see those storms coming through the metro and a lot of uh, wind damage reports, uh, especially in and around and to the north of the metro area. Zooming in a little bit here. These are all reports of trees down. You can see those in the south and east metro as well. And here's a, a loop back of some of the possible wind speeds in the storm and the purple areas. Those are the highest wind speeds we see come through the west and south metro and I've zoomed in and paused this at seven o'clock last night. This is right around the area that uh, Ellery McArdle is this morning. Potential that some 70 mile per hour winds move right through that area. And of course, the Weather Service will determine if that was actually tornadic or if that was straight line winds. So let's go uh, live to Ellery, who is out there this morning where uh, it's a mess there this morning. Yeah, absolutely, Sven. A complete mess here at the Busman family farm. I mean, look at this twisted metal that's scattered all around the ditch. I mean, how would you like to wake up, look out your window and see this? absolute mess metal scattered all over their farm. Now the good news is that nobody in the Busman family was hurt, so they're walking away with this very thankful. But I want to show you video from last night right after the storm. Take a look at this. You know that strong wind took down their farm shop and an empty hog barn. It also tore off the roof of their cattle shed. Other than that, like we showed you, the debris is just scattered across their field. Now the owners, Keith and Don, say they've never seen this kind of damage on their farm before and they're just really glad that their family wasn't hurt. So again, today it's all about the cleanup. It's about those painful calls to the insurance company for them to come out and look at all of this damage. And the Busmans, when you ask them about last night's storm, oh, they totally saw those clouds roll in. You've got to hear their reaction. I'm going to play that for you coming up at 630. Uh, but let's go to Kaya Edwards. She is in the care 11 backyard right now. Kaya, you've been seeing photos and videos from all over really. Oh yeah, Ellery, our viewers are such an important part of telling this story and we did get some incredible photos and videos from you guys, many of them taken during the strong points of the storm. Oh, we just lost a big tree. A scary moment for Nancy, who tells us half of the tree landed on the house. Here's what else you sent us during the storms. Hail hitting the deck in Montrose. Heavy rain in Excelsior. Flooding in Plymouth. In St. Peter, Tina got shots of the lightning show. And then the storms rolled out, but your images kept rolling in, like this pic of these strange and beautiful clouds. That's how Rebecca in Bloomington describes the sky. And a lot of you noticed rainbows. The calm after the storm. Hey, thanks again for sending us those photos and videos. And the next time we do get storms, don't forget you too can use the hashtag Care11Weather. And Gia, as we always say though, you got to do this, take those pictures in a safe location. Absolutely, yeah. Kaya. All right, and thanks to our viewers for sending all those in too. Yeah, keep them coming. The storm is continuing to cause the problems, unfortunately, for travelers trying to fly out of MSP this morning. Right now, several flights are either delayed or canceled, so if you're catching a flight this morning, keep an eye on the departure times. They could change. And to get the latest on the weather, download our new CARE 11 app. We Love to see your your pictures. Post them on our social media pages using the hashtag Sunrisers. All right, let's give you another check of the roads this morning. We were keeping an eye on a rollover crash. Looks like they got this uh, truck back onto its four wheels there this morning. 35E, this is southbound, not far from Main Street. You can see it's blocking that uh, right shoulder, and traffic is moving at a snail's pace this morning. So if you drive 35E southbound from the split in Columbus, uh, you might want to leave early or find an alternate route. Now here's a look at your top local stories in our morning rush. We'll soon get an update today on the Hennepin County beaches that have been closed for weeks. Crews were out yesterday testing water at Excelsior Commons, Lake Hiawatha Beach, as well as Thomas Beach and the 32nd Street Beach at Bidet Macosca. They're all closed because of E. coli. Those test results are due back later today. A former Minneapolis officer convicted in the 2017 shooting death of an unarmed woman has been moved to a prison outside of Minnesota. Mohammed Noor was sentenced to more than 12 years behind bars for shooting and killing 40-year-old Justine Ruzchek Damon. 
The Minnesota Department of Corrections confirmed Noor was moved out of the states, but would not tell us where. I'm Tracy Potts in Washington. Couple of things to look out for today. Republicans are meeting with the president this afternoon. Republican leaders who've been largely silent on this. Will they condemn him or will they support him? And Democrats being pushed to impeach President Trump by the four women of color serving in Congress that he's targeted uh, with these comments that have been largely considered racist. They're now standing together saying that the president is trying to distract from what's happening at the border. If you have that crawling feeling that Minnesota's tick population is getting worse, well, you're probably right. The Metropolitan Mosquito Control District says their new study shows the number of ticks on mammals throughout the area has more than doubled since 1990. They're urging people to take precautions anytime they're in wooded areas. Experts say you should use bug spray with DEET and do a thorough tick check after spending any time outdoors, and that includes your pets. And that's your Tuesday morning rush. And now time for our digital dive, a closer look at one of the most talked about stories in Minnesota. And this is a big one. You might remember St. Louis Park's on again, off again relationship with the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, now it's back on. A huge crowd showed up last night at the city council meeting and they got what they came for. The council votes 7-0 to reinstate the pledge. Some background, last month when the city council approved a resolution to stop saying the pledge before the uh, uh, meetings, well, city council members said the pledge didn't reflect the city's diverse value. They called it unnecessary. And that didn't go over so well. So that was the initial decision back on June 17th. Well, it got a lot of backlash online and even from President Trump. He tweeted twice, actually, not just once, but twice. And part of what he said was our patriots are now having to fight for their right to say the Pledge of Allegiance. But again, last night, the St. Louis City, St. Louis Park Council voted unanim unanimously to reinstate it, and that was 7-0. So here's what our sunrises are saying about all of this. Layla is all for the reversal. She says, if you don't want to say it, don't, but don't deny others the freedom to do so if they wish. Good decision, St. Louis Park. Rin is not so happy, though, saying the council caved. Too bad. Clearly, there is not liberty and justice for all. Myrtle says she would love to see a list of the other cities that don't say the pledge. She says it's really not a big deal in other locations. Of course, we still want to know what you think about this. Head on over and uh, tweet us. Um, send us a Facebook yeah. message. Use Where? the hashtag Sunrisers. But, you know, I think I'm just kind of like, hmm. I'm not surprised yeah. that they reinstated it after all the backlash from around the country, including right. the president. But I'm with Myrtle and the fact that there's other cities that don't do this. So where's the it's backlash in those cities? Yeah. All right. Okay. Sven, one thing weather. Quiet weather today. We're looking at uh, sunshine and uh, no storms in the metro, but we will see some to the south. We'll talk about that coming up. Ben, thank you. One thing, traffic this morning, there was a rollover crash, 35 East southbound, your main street not far from the Lionel Lakes area. This is your route. Check it out. Drive times are really slow in that area, so you might want to hop on 61 southbound or even 35W to avoid sitting in traffic. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. It was one of the most defining moments in human history. 50 years ago today, Apollo 11 launched into space with its one destination, the moon. Thanks to the historic mission, NASA has made leaps and bounds when it comes to space exploration. That's right. So joining us live from NASA's Goddard, Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, is scientist Michelle Thaler. And Michelle, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Hey, great to have you. Yeah, th thanks so much for having me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we want to know with the moon landing anniversary just a couple days away, how is NASA looking back on this moment? Well, like you said, 50 years ago today, something wonderful happened. People actually launched on a Saturn V rocket, the Apollo 11 mission to land on the moon. And we're leading up to this Saturday being the 50th anniversary of the first time people actually stood somewhere other than the Earth. So there are events going on all around the country, all around the world. I'll be on the National Met Mall this coming Saturday. We're having this wonderful celebration of what happened 50 years ago, but also looking ahead to our plans to return to the moon. You have a pretty incredible job. NASA, though, currently has a mission orbiting the moon right now, which just celebrated its 10th anniversary. What are some of the surprising things you guys are learning from this moon mission? 
Well, absolutely. So here at Goddard, we actually manage the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, and this is a satellite that orbits the moon. It has been doing so for the last 10 years. Some of the amazing things you can see are actually the Apollo landing sites. The, the, those dark lines you see there are the footsteps, the footprints of the astronauts. And we've also been looking at places near the south pole of the moon, where as you see them here in blue, there are craters that are always in shadow. They're always dark. And we think that ice has accumulated in those craters. The ice could be used to sustain a human presence on the moon or even to make rocket fuel once we get to the surface of the moon. There's a lot more to discover on the moon. All right, Michelle, thank you. That's really cool. Yeah. And cool to see Michelle. Women in STEM mm -hmm. jobs, we love it. Thank you so much, Michelle. All right, you can join today this morning as they kick off the countdown to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's historic walk on the moon. That's, of course, coming up right after sunrise. No question, Minnesota is beautiful. But coming up in 30 minutes, we're going to show you one landmark like you've never seen it before then. If you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. And one man's lesson learned the hard way and the warning he wants you to hear before it's too late. Then a secret Facebook group along the U.S.-Mexico border, what current and former border agents were saying that could land them on the other side of the law.